What's good, people? This is the Fight Talk podcast with myself, Sam O'Reilly. Obviously, myself and James from Round Date. Today, we're delighted to be joined by Dillian White. How are you, Dillian? Good, how are you guys? Yeah, we're very good, mate. Very good, sir. Now, I know you've been training really hard. How, how's the training been going for you? It's been good. It's been a bit hard, but, you know, that's, that's good, man. Um, needed to... Um, I mean, I'm I'm uh, I'm approaching um, that level of um, competition again. So just up in it, man. Just up in it every day, and every every camp gets a little bit harder and a little bit more, a little bit more um, tricky and stuff. But, but it's all good. Now, yeah, Dylan, for this camp, you know you've had some good sparring. Um, Dave Allen, you've uh, brought him as a sparring partner for a couple of days during this camp. I'm sort of foes to almost friends. I mean, how did that come about? No, no, you know, listen, man, um, I just came about, you know, I mean, I just reached out to the guy, you know, I mean, obviously, I see to the guys having a hard time and that, you know, I mean, so I thought, you know, I mean, a little bit of change of scenery and um, some good competitive sparring and that, you know, getting my, uh, out of his, 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 his normal routine. So I, I'm on the phone and shut up, man. Yeah, get him out, out, out of his routine and that for, for a couple of days, you know, I mean, it'd be good for him and that, you know, so I thought, oh, okay. And also, he's good sparring, but Ian Lewis in as well because he, he throws a lot of overhand um, swinging um, hooks and stuff, you know? Yeah. Now, what, what, is, what does fight look look for you now? Wait, are you on the, you on the way to Scotland or when, when do you travel? I think Tuesday, I think. Yeah. yeah I, like, I, like going, I like going to the fights a little bit early. I can mingle and mix with, um, with the local people and that, you know? Yeah, of course. So, was the last couple of days just ticking over in the gym, a little bit of you know running and stuff? The last couple of days, just just we call it staying warm. You know, what I mean, just staying warm, really. You know, just keeping the engine handling at um at, at, at a decent pace because all the hard work's done. You know, I mean, I'm not going to get any fitter, any stronger, any sharper. No, all, all, all I'm going to do is possibly possibly injure myself. I I I. I Obviously, it's quite well known that you, you've trained in the past with Lewis. And what are your thoughts on him? I mean, have you got memories of sparring together, and or, you know him as a person? What, as you say, it's all it's all business, and it's. But is there any added incentive for you as you you've known him in the past? Oh, this, listen, I, I take him a fight the same. Yeah, we're on fighting. Uh, I'm fighting. Um, I'm fighting Ian Lewis. Yeah, I'm fighting Ian Lewis. Yeah, we're on fighting I'm just gonna just um 
getting the assurance that it's my time. You know, this time, this time is gone now. It's my time to to shine, man. That's all, man. That's all there is to this fight, you know. So, did you train together a lot, or did you did you ever socialize outside of the gym? <laughs> Did you happen to see David Price's fight last night? He's a guy that, obviously, Dave Allen originally and has been, you know, he's looking for big fights himself now, David Price. Did you catch his fight last night and would that be a fight you'd be interested in? Yeah, I did. That's a fight I'd definitely be interested in. He does need to fight someone to be in because at the level he's okay, I understand he lost, but he shouldn't be at this level that he's been fighting for so, um, these last couple of fights. He should have had like one or two warm up fights and maybe one. You know what I mean? You, your, your expiration coming around champion, you're going to be the next big thing just for one thing, Joshua. So, why are you wasting your time fighting these kind of guys? You should be fighting proper people, you know what I mean? Kick, take, you know? You shouldn't be wasting your time fighting those guys. Because I think that, that guy that he fought is terrible. You know what I mean? That guy that he fought was terrible. But he got the win anyway, and um, he's back in. He's like I can say, yeah, the fact that I would like to fight is one that I think Dave Allen is really trying to get a goal, you know what I mean? That's a good fight for, for him, but realistically, he needs to be fighting the big the guy, the big boy, you know what I mean? Not messing about with those kind of opponents, you know? Yeah, definitely. Especially as he's talking about wanting to fight Joshua World Titles and stuff, I think you're right, he's fighting levels of, guys at levels that, you know, it's just not very impressive to anyone. It's, it's not going to get him the big fights, is it? <laughs> Them guys ain't going to prepare him for no... None of the top five in the country, top five, top six in the country. Them guys ain't gonna pay for anything. No one in the top ten, them guys gonna pay him for you know. Most of in the world. He needs to get, out, he needs to get in with some decent people, not some decent fights. You know what I mean? And you know, let's, let's be honest. Let's be honest. David Price can punch. He's got punch power. That's never, that's never been an issue for him. He's got punch power. But I think where he lacked is where he lack, he lack is, is 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 heart and, uh, and courage and um. You know, I think, I think that's where he, that's that's where he, he lacks. He just and that's something that you can't really work on. I see now he's trying to change his own demeanor. He's swearing a lot in in these videos and interviews, and he's he's trying to have, act like a um bad and hard and stuff. You know, fair play to maybe he's seen some psychiatrists or something, and they're telling him that's what he needs to do to become nasty or 
But Dave Cardo was putting something in his mind. So let, let's see, let's see what happens. Let's see if he if he helps him. If he helps him and uh, and he makes him a better fighter, then go ahead. But one thing is for sure, if you know if that situation gets any worse and the titles, you know, they become vacant, it it opens it up again. Then it really wide division. You could be one, maybe two fights away from fighting for a world title. Yeah, I was saying that. You know, I was saying um, belts become vacant, whatever. I might get the car as soon as I fought. You know what I mean? <laughs> I might get the car as soon as I fought. You know what I mean? Um, you never know, innit? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You never know. That's why I'm, I'm just trying to focus on me. You know, I just trying to focus on me and um, I just um, just train, just 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 train, keep the other thing, keep keep improving, keep improving, and just keep um, just keep getting better, keep getting fitter, keep getting stronger, keep getting technically um better and all that, all of that. You know what I mean? And just keep fighting at the big shows, keep having these learning fights, and keep building up my, my resume to be honest. And that's it. You know what I mean? I think next year. Next year is my year. I just gotta get through these next two fights this year, and then next year is my year, man, to to go after the world title. <laughs> what would it mean to you becoming the British heavyweight champ? Obviously, you, your eyes on world championship, being a being a world heavyweight champ, but being a British heavyweight champ, what would it mean to you to achieve that? At this stage, in this moment in my career, it means. It would mean as much to me as winning a world title at this stage of my career, you know what I mean? Because you follow, you, you know I mean? I'm following the route that many of the, the great champions from the country took took before me, you know what I mean? Like the likes of, you know, I think the last one was, was Tyson Fury. The last one was um, Joshua and Tyson Fury. But before that, you know what I mean? The, the, um, all decent heavyweight awards come from the country has been British champions. So for me, it, it means a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know, it, I would really... Does mean a lot to me, and you know, I'm prepared to lay, lay whatever down. I'm gonna lay down the line next next Friday to to become British champion. You know, I mean a lot to I mean. You know, I mean my name. You know, my name is, is just another piece of history that I've made, and my name is it's forever cemented. My name will be forever cemented um, amongst all the, the, the when they look up past British champion. You know, I mean, I want I want my name to be one of the names that come up. You know, what I mean, you mean the world to me. You know. Now, you know, of course, uh, if you do win the British title on Friday, uh, Saturday, excuse me, and then, you know, what's your plans after that? I mean, you said potentially there, Sam said to keep two fights away from world title. Obviously, you've got to defend it three times to keep hold of it. Um, what, is that your plan? Are you looking to defend it so many times to keep hold of it? Or is it a case of if the world title comes available, then of course you're going to take that. The, the, the plan is always to defend the belt and to win the belt outright, but let's be honest. I'm going to see if it's different to fight in the UK three times to defend the British style. If I beat, I, I, I beat this guy Friday, I fight Derek Suzuka, then there, there's no one else really for me to fight for no sort of um, British style, really, is there? Who else, who else is there? I, you know, I beat Suzuka, I beat Ian and Suzuka, then I have to be look, looking to challenge for for for, for bigger and, and, and better things, you know? Mm. 
Yeah. No. But that's that's just the way it goes. You know, what I mean, um, you can stay at British level and and, and, and you know, show the belt out right, which I would really love to do. But also, my 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 my, my dream, my main goal is to become heavyweight champion in the world and to defend the belt a few times. You know. Yeah. You obviously Derek Chisora, you touched on. That's a fight I think everyone wants to see. Um, I had a question sent in via Twitter by a guy Nemo seventy eight. He wants to know what you thought, what you think of Luis Ortiz, and whether you'd ever fight him. Listen, I fight, I fight anyone. I, listen, I think Luis Ortiz he's a good fighter. I think he's a good fighter. He's technically good, like most like most Cuban boxers are. But we'll see how long his discipline will hold up for. Like 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 many of the other Cuban boxers who's come, come before him. You know. You know, the likes of Gumbo, the likes of um, Alan de Feliz, you know what I mean? It's been, it's been untold amount of um, Cuban fighters that's come before him, and they've all been technically great, you know, but then after there's other things that, like Mike Perez, all of those guys, other things that come into play, like discipline and other things, so we'll see, you know what I mean? But I fight anyone, listen, I fight anyone, 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 you know what I mean? Even... I'll, 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 I'll tell you, I'll tell you, all he really did to me is saying, oh, there's this guy that wants to fight. You see, Eddie loves it when he calls me, because when he calls me, I mention fight, I don't really say, yeah, let me think about it, whatever. I just say, I say, no worries, no. yeah, I'll, I'll have some of that. <laughs> you know what I mean, that's my mindset. I want, I want to fight, I want to give the the fans and the people good fights, man. That, that's why I'm in the sport for you. I mean, I'm not in the sport to try and con people and try and, um, you know, Sneak my way around. No, I, I want to. I want to be involved in good fights. Give the fans fight that they they can remember years, years and years to come. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I want the fans to say, yeah, they don't want. You know, I mean, you fought, you fought anyone, but come out challenges and and, and and that's it. You gave us um good nights that we can remember. Same that Ricky Hatton. Like like you know, I could Ricky Hatton fought anyone and gave the fans nights that they they won't ever forget for the rest of their life. And you know, what I mean, they, you know, like. Their grandkids will be speaking about how long after he's gone, and that's what I want. You know, what I mean, I want, I want that sort, that sort of, um, you know, that's what I want. Yeah, I, I, want to I want to make a living and a life for my my family and my, my kids and my family and that. But also, you know, I want to remember as one of the guys that fought anyone and gave back to the friends and the people who support me. You know. Now uh, we know you'll fight anyone. Is there a little bit of added, like not not pressure, but I know Derek Chisora and yourself have had a few little rows and so on. Is that a fight you'd actively pursue before going up to world level? <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See, everything of a time and a place and expiry date, and um, I think the stage I'm at in my career now, I think Derek Chisora is a good fight for me because Derek Derek is still. You know what I mean? He's still a credible guy on, on the world scene. You know what I mean? He's still credible on the world scene. He's still, he's still a dangerous um, operator as well. You know, he's got his match when, he, when he, he shows up and he turns it up. You know what I mean? And then he's got his match when he shows up and he's just not there. So he's still a dangerous um, operator. You never know who's going to turn up or, or what's going to happen with him when he's in the building. You never really know what's what with him. So. It's still a dangerous fight. I think it's a good fight for me at this stage of my career. You know what I mean? Because he's at the stage of his career now where he's probably got, what, two, three more fights left in the tank. Yeah. And I'm at a stage of his career now where I'm like, I think a quarter, a quarter, a quarter of the way from my career. So, you know, that's, that's like all the champions before before me. There's that one person there. For, I think um, when Scott Walsh was coming through, I think he has some, I think he fought Joe Bugner, didn't he? I think, is it Joe Bugner? Who did he fight? Um, um, yeah, I think it was Bugner. Yeah, Joe Bogner. Joe Bogner was a bit past it, but it was a, it was a good fight. And Cut was getting there and put on a good show. But that's what you have to be. You have to be the guys before you. And I think Cesaro is one of those sort of guys. You know, what I mean, I, I beat him, then that 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 cement me as a world level contender. You know. <coughs> yeah. I think I think you know. it's a, I think it's a good point. Like you say, his name still carries a lot of weight. He's been there with a lot of people, with David Hayes and Klitschko's of the world, Fury twice. So. Definitely having that on your resume, a, a, a victory over Derek Chisora will definitely, you know, it will do a lot for your reputation, won't it, going forward? Yeah, it's, it's a good limit, but I think the, the fella still holds on to a decent world ranking. He's a bit deluded, but, you know what I mean, he's still a decent fighter, you know? I mean, 
funny enough, I think is one that that will capture the, the British public imagination as well. And uh, these are the kind of fights I want because I can fight some American or some 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 German or whatever who no one ever heard of, who no one don't really know about. And they may be maybe better fights for me. Um, maybe better fights for me. Um, on strategic wise, but. No one knows these guys, you know what I mean? And, and I want to be involved in, in fights that capture the public imagination, good fights, you know what I mean? Fights that, fights that people say, yeah, I can't wait for the fight this weekend, you know what I mean? That, that's what I want. Yeah, no, no one will ever be able to say Dillian White ducks a fight here and there. It'll never be able to be said. So, yeah, I think you're well on your way, mate. I think everyone knows you're a fighter and you don't turn down fights. And that Chisora fight for me on a personal level is one that, I really hope it gets made sooner rather than later. I love that fight, and I just think it'd be fireworks from the press conferences to to fight night. So I hope that fight gets made myself. Uh, I was just up to this glass him, I think. I just up to this glass him at the press conference. <laughs> it, 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 it seems to be a natural. It seems to be a natural um, thing for him to get glass or a bottle at these press conferences. So. I need. I need. I, I need to have... tell him he owes me a camera. Still, I don't know if he knows he smashed my camera that day. You know. Nah, listen, that guy's a joke, man. You know what I mean? That guy, that guy, he, he's, he's a clown, you know what I mean? That, that's, listen, Derek, he knows how to play the game. He knows how to play people and make people think that he's crazy or he's, he's a loose cannon and this, that, and the other. And a lot of people believe it and, and go with it. But listen, I, I know that guy. That guy is just a, he's a joker, man. He's a joker, you know what I mean? The, the guy's a joker, you know what I mean? He, he, he buys a Bentley and drives around with no insurance and no driver's license. <laughs> he's, he's a clown. He's a clown, you know what I mean? That, that's how much of a clown he is, you know? You're a black guy, you're driving a high-performance um, um, luxury car with no insurance and no no, no driver's license in, in, in Amsterdam East. You think you're not going to get pulled over by the feds? You know what I mean? He's a clown. He's a clown. Uh, James, have you got any further questions for Dill? No, that's, that's it. And I wanted to ask him if I uh, answer more than more to him. <laughs> No, all right, man. Well, listen, we, we wish you the best of luck for Friday, mate. Always good to talk to you. Thanks for giving your time to Fight Talk. No worries, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man, and just, you know, good luck in the future as well, mate. You too. Take care, mate. Thank you. Thank all you. Right, mate. Good luck. Cool. Cool. We're now delighted to be joined on the phone by Ian Lewison. How are you, mate? You all right? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. <laughs> How's training? And when when how you finish? Obviously, at fight week now. How are you feeling? to come up to it. Obviously, I'm um, going to go. I'm just, just can't wait to get out, get out there, and do a number and dinner. When are you off to Scotland then? I'm going on Wednesday. Yeah, just get there, do a bit of a press conference again, is it? And then weigh in and then fight. Yeah. You don't you don't um, usually get involved in sort of public workouts and stuff like that now? No, I wouldn't be in, in that because that's the tough thing, the public workouts on the Monday, so I'll still be in London when the public workout is taking part. I mean, before this, I see your last fight was out in um, China, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what's the whole experience of that like? I mean, you know, I see a whole other country, another, you know, other side of the world, time scale is so different. What was the whole experience overall like? No, the experience was actually a, a marvellous one. It was actually wonderful because I went out there, they accepted me, they embraced me and I was never made to feel any other way. And it was like, I was welcomed out there. So I, I must admit, it was a, a nice experience. So when this fight was offered to you, was there any hesitation? I mean, I know you had a plan. Um, I believe it was Japan you were going to fight in. Yep. Now, was there any hesitation in taking this fight, you know, deviating from the, the plan or was it the fight just too good to turn down? No, it's one of them fights that you think to yourself, why would you turn down because it's an opportunity to fight for the prestigious British title. So, um, with an opportunity like that and you're, and you're given like four or five weeks notice, even though the circumstances could have been better where you could have been given more time, the fact is with an um, opportunity like that, you, you tend not to turn down. You know the, the thought of becoming British heavyweight champion. Is there is there any you know is that is that the dream for you? If, I mean, we had a question sent in. If you win it, would you look to win it outright, and or would you move directly on to other titles? Um, well, right now the the main problem is not so I'm not really looking at the title. I'm looking at the fact that I'm going to be in the 
as and when it's won, we'll decide our circumstances as and when it presents itself. We'll see how and what we do then. I mean, as I mentioned, obviously, the original plan before this fight come up was for you to go back to Japan or so. So you had a great trip out into um, Asia. You know, is that, you know, again, another future plan? Are you looking to go back out into Asia? You know, like you say, you felt so welcomed and embraced by them. Is that something you want to go back and almost like a... Oh, I, won I, won the the WBO. I won the WBO, and so it's like they want me to go back out there and defend it. So that is an option that's there. So once this fight is out of the way, I'm on hold of the British, and I still have my WBO. I may still go out there and defend it. Who knows? Yeah, depending on what happens. Now, obviously, yeah. it's for the British title, but did the fact that it was Dillian White add a little something for you? I mean, it's well documented. You're from the same area, you've been to the same gym. Um, you know, did it, it? What are your thoughts on Dillian? First of all, as, as a fighter, and then as a man, because I know there's been a bit of needle and a few things said here and there. So, what what are your thoughts on Dillian all round? Well, Dillian as a fighter, my thoughts on him is he does everything that could be asked as a boxer. He does everything at about a fifty percent rate. So I wouldn't say he excels at anything particularly. He's not a a great fighter. He's not a great boxer, but he's a great all rounder in the sense that he does everything to a fifty percent. Ratio. So, as a person, now I just think he's a monkey. The person, he's, he's a very disrespectful guy. He's, he's the kind of guy you think, so what on earth goes through his head? <laughs> Do you have a lot of memories from, you know, any sparring memories and stuff from back in the day? Uh, well, as you know, we shared the same gym for many a years and we've crossed paths many a time. So, yeah, but there's not really much memories. It's just like, we were, we were gym buddies kind of thing, not buddies, but we, we were gym buddies in the sense that we both operate in the same place. Now, your career path has been um, so many different sort of things. You took part in the uh, Prize Fighter back in 2013. Um, what was that experience like in that sort of tournament sort of um, environment? Well, to be fair, the experience itself was a good one because it opened me up to a whole new way of boxing in the sense that I was actually able to fight um, a, my first international fighter, which was Timor Hoffman, which I stopped in the first, and then the second one, which was Derek Rossi, which was an American guy. So it's like, in the professional ranks, it opened me up to a new element of fighters where before that I was fighting like British guys and Eastern Europeans, so it opened up a new angle in the sense of quite a new opposition from different walks in the world. Yeah, different experiences that will help you ultimately in your career, I guess. Mm -hmm. Now, did you see the David Price fight last night? We um, we discussed this with Dillian. Um, you know, he's, he's fighting guys, he wants the big fights, um, and he's fighting guys that aren't really going to, you know, impress anyone regarding getting, you know, learning for the big fights. Is David Price a fight you would take? Well, I've been asking for that fight ever since the day we fought with amateurs. And it's like, my, my calls are going unanswered. And it's like, I've, I've been pressuring, I've been calling him out from the minute we to I turn pro to me, he turned pro. That's the fight I've always wanted. You think it's but, a good fight for you? It's a good fight for you, you think? Sorry? You think that's a good fight for you? I mean, obviously, he's he's known as a big puncher, but he's been chinny in the past. And I think, yeah, I, I, I think it'd be a good fight to see yourself against him. Why do you think it hasn't happened so far? Because they're protecting his chin, and they know that me going in there. And the fact is, the way I start, the way I fight, my aggressive come forward style. They know that he'll be in problems. Even if they're thinking to themselves, that even if he did manage to get through it, it's a matter of what happens during the course of that time of him getting through it. It's just going to put more doubts in his head, and it's going to open up his whole mind to negativity, which he, they don't want in him. They're trying to get rid of the fact the thoughts through his head that he thinks he's chinny right now so to put him in there with someone like me is very dangerous so it can't do his psychological um, it can't do his psychology any good him going in there with someone like me mate you say there so you, uh, obviously part of fight you've always wanted um, I mean after this like you say you could go on if you win this fight you go on defend the British go to Japan defend the WBO uh, title. I mean, who, who, is there anyone in particular out there, apart from Price, that you could look at and you go, I want to fight them realistically next year? Um, well, to tell you the truth, what, I would hope, what I'm hoping for is get this British then next year challenge for the 
European and regardless of who's got it and that's what I want to do I want to fight for the title so irrelevant of who has it I would want to be knocking down that door and whoever it so happens to be it will be now you've been you've been boxing for a long time uh, it, what's you know how long do you plan on carrying on boxing is there quite a few years left in you you're still happy you know what while you're happy and confident in training keep basically keep doing it until you stop enjoying it yeah that's true for that is I ain't put no deadline in it but I'm just going to carry on going until I wake up one day and say to myself do you know what I don't want to do it no more yeah well but for you now, still enjoy it so you're still enjoying it now you're still enjoying the training in the gym every day yeah, I do I do because you've got to imagine you've got to imagine before you get yourself a big um, fight or a big, any type of opportunities it's the love that gets you to the gym every day is the love that makes you get up and go out and do the run and it's the love of it that makes you do all these things that enable you to fight for the titles at a later date so if you don't love it you're not going to put in all that work and do everything that needed to get to the title stages so with the last couple of days now before the fight what are we five days away from the fight what, yes, about that. What, what now you just last couple of days what you've been doing just ticking over in the gym bit of cardio work and stuff yeah you know it's just staying sharp um, basically you're not doing too much to, to exhaust yourself but you're just doing enough you say obviously you, you want to go and you know defend the British um, you're not sure who you sort of in the future and that but I mean um, I believe um, you might be a gym mate of yours uh, Dominic Ecolade Southern Area Champion currently obviously if he keeps going away he's going he's knocking down the route of the English title British title is that something that could you know, you two of you come head to head. Well, like with anything in in any field, at the end of the day, in any industry you work in, you and someone you develop friendships through being at work. And the fact is, at the end of the day, you meet someone through work and you develop a close knit friendship. But a uh, job opportunity presents itself in that same company where a promotion is available, irrelevant of your friends. You're both going to go for it. So it's just a matter of who gets the job. So it's, it's the same thing with boxing. Your friends in the box game but the fact is if it's for a title you put your friendship on hold and you do what you've got to do to get that title to, to get to where you want to be yeah it's a, obviously a relatively short career in boxing and you know when there's fights there if it makes sense for all parties you know I think yeah, it's, it can be a selfish selfish thing at times as well you, you've got your own career aspirations that you want to achieve regardless of if it's your friend or your enemy you want to become champion and depend on what straps are on the line why not take the fight Did you make, um, did you see the Isaac Chamberlain fight on Thursday night? I know he, he's a Brixton boy. I saw the results of it. Yeah, Isaac won. That was he's, he's looking really good, and really sharp, um, and you know he showed his heart in that fight. Do you reckon there's um, any chance of your fight going that way that you'd, you'd fight through and you know get? There's no way you're giving up on this fight, is there? This is this fight means a lot to you, doesn't it? That, that reminds me, obviously watching the Cleverly Bremer fight last night, Jürgen Bremer hurt his um, his elbow at the end of the sixth round um, and decided not to come out in a world title fight. Um, so it just it, it just sort of occurred to me that, you know, some people, it means more to them than other people at, the, you know, certain stages of their career. So how much does this British title realistically mean to you, Ian? Well, well obviously it means a lot because that's why I'm actually challenging him for it and the title is many have fought for over years before me so and I'm sure that after I fight for it many will still fight for it in years to come so it is a well prestigious title to be up, um, involved with it's one of them things no matter what happens you you fight for this belt you win this belt you're, you're among you're among history because your name will go down as the person who held it now I mean the, the heavyweight division is sort of coming back this sort of you know, people said it hasn't really had its heyday since, you know, the 90s and the 80s, things like that. I mean, it's coming back. I mean, there's a lot of young talent coming through as well. I mean, uh, young lads trying to work hat and they from Gorman won the uh, Central Area title last night. you got people like Huey Fury, again, youth on his side, and he's looking at well up in the rankings. I mean, who for you in the heavyweight division has the biggest potential? Sorry, can you repeat that again, sir? Yeah, who in the uh, heavyweight division for yourself has um, sort of the biggest potential to reach world title stage? 
stage, at least stage. In my opinion, are you asking, yeah? Yeah. Um, do you know what? Um, it's one of them things, isn't it? Because you, you, it's like, I don't know, because that's a hard question to ask, because circumstances can create champions. It's not also just a case of a champion being a champion from the off. It's like certain stages and certain things that people go through in life can help them to harden them up and those things can create that you know, dig inside them that, that makes them want to get to that title level and make them put in that little bit extra in the next person but I don't know it's like to me anyone with enough desire and will is willing to dig deep and go to places where others aren't willing to go they're the ones who can get there most yeah. definitely let's see let's see how you know who wants it more on Friday what can we expect Ian what, and a final final word what can we expect Friday night mate you can expect what you normally get man you just all out action non-stop just going for it well listen thank you very much for joining us on the Fight Talk podcast we appreciate your time and best of luck for Friday uh, thank you thank you thank you thank you